Hey guys, I have a simple devlog update here. For this video, I'm mainly just showing off the updated battle UI, so there's nothing too major here. I know it's been a while since I uploaded my last devlog, and I like to upload more frequently, but right now I'm, I'm learning how to tweak and chip away at plugins to achieve what I want. It's a very slow process, but honestly, without doing this, I wouldn't have been able to make what I'm about to show off in this video. So as you can see by the footage, the battle UI has received a slight upgrade in my opinion. For starters, I've upgraded the visual aesthetics of it by adding a fancy dark border to match the game's tone. And at the four corners of the screen, you can see spinning gears here. The speed at which these gears spin is synced to the player's combo count. So the higher your combo count, the faster the gears spin. Aesthetically, this is probably my favorite addition because just watching the sp speed up and slow down due to your performance really helps with the immersion. It also makes the project feel less like RPG Mech and more like a real game. Next, I want you guys to check out the top left of the screen here. The top of this section displays the player's current score. Uh, this number will be added to the player's combat grade evaluation at the end of the battle. Uh, the, the game records certain metrics during the battle, like how many turns it took to defeat the opponent, how many accumulated hits the player has received, and the highest combo chain. Most of these metrics are being recorded behind the scenes, so you can't really see your true score until the end of the battle. But this counter up top increases based on how many critical hits you've landed and how many successful dodges you've performed. For those of you who are unaware, this battle system is essentially a rhythm game. I know at first glance it looks like a lot of flashy craziness is going on in these battles, but it's actually incredibly simple to play. It's much simpler than my previous game, Mana Raiders, actually. All the stuff you see going on on screen is just the player timing one button press. That's it. This entire battle system can be summed up to just pressing the confirm button at the appropriate time. Now it's not necessarily mindless mashing because there are specific timings for each move, but overall it's just me pressing the button at the correct time. If you want to dodge the enemy's attack, just press the confirm button at the right time. If you want to hit the enemy, just press the confirm button at the right time. Now there's layers of depth to it. For instance, to score a critical hit in this game, you have to time the button press really well. And the general rule of thumb is, the later you press the button, the better. If you press the button too late in the attack, you'll miss altogether and drop your combo chain. And if you press the button too early, you'll just hit the opponent for normal damage. And this method is the only way to score a critical hit in this game. There are no RNG modifiers like you see in other RPG games. So the players that are more skilled will be rewarded. And speaking of rewards, the score counter up top will increase by 5 points for each critical hit the player lands. Right here is a very basic graph of the grading system in this game. These numbers are still being tweaked, but hopefully this gives you guys some insight as to how the battle system works. To score an S rank in this game, the player has to score at least 2,000 points during the battle. Clearing the battle within a turn and taking no hits while doing so will pretty much guarantee you an S rank. However, not every fight in this game can be cleared in just one turn, so I have other modifiers like critical hit counts and dodge counts to help boost your score in tougher fights. Now right under the score counter is the phase counter. It just displays the number of turns that have passed so far. In this game, turns are called phases. Now over on the top right of the screen is the tactics menu icon. This icon will drop down whenever you toggle it by pressing either the page up or the page down button. On a controller, these are the bumpers. In my last video, I stated that class changing would be done by pressing either of the, these two buttons. But I've moved the class changing features to the D-pad or the arrow keys if you're on a keyboard. If the player lets this icon continue to flash during the end of the turn, the battle will pause and bring up the fight or flee menu. I'm going to add a feature that when this menu is pulled up, the entire party will be healed for a moderate percentage. This is useful if you want to take a a breather mid-fight. However, you might not always want to do this because bringing this menu up will immediately end your current combo chain. So if you're shooting for a high score and the enemies you're facing are really beefy, then you might want to think twice before using this feature. A cool little secret I'm adding is that if you'll be able to choose if you want the 
tactics icon to be on as soon as the battle starts through the options menu. If you leave it off, battles will begin immediately and the phase counter will start at 0 instead of 1. This essentially gives you an extra turn to help boost your score. So the players that are really know what they're doing will have a nice little bonus for jumping straight into the action with no delay. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up right here, guys. I'm not entirely done with the U this UI, and I still need to remove spirit shards from the, the character's face portraits since they're no longer going to be in the game, and I have to finish some um, other things, make some final adjustments to the battle system's core concept and fundamentals before I show off the nightmare system and the team attack systems that I teased in the last video. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And uh, take care, guys.